Hello and welcome to this video session on Peak Microcontroller 16F877A Hardware Interfacings. We will try to understand different hardware interfacings, its simulation basically through a software called as Peak Sim Lab. These are the learning outcomes of this video session. So at the end student will be able to demonstrate the operation and effectiveness of the virtual simulation for the peak microcontroller. Student will be able to implement the steps for virtual simulation using uh, this peak simulab software and student will be able to interface different peripherals like LED, push button, switches, LCD, motor, keypad, e square from IC, relay etc. So these are the contents of this presentation. So first we will have a brief introduction about the peak sim lab. Then we will go for this, what are the steps we need to follow when you are using that peak sim lab. Then we will have demonstration of different peripherals using one sample demo program available. And then we will go for uh, how we can have interfacing of uh, different spare parts, peripherals like LED, push button, switches, LCD, motor, etc. So now let us move to the software Peak Sim Lab. So when it is installed on your computer, so you will get a short, shortcut created on your desktop. So this is the front end you get for the Peak Sim Lab. So here this is a virtual board available. Only thing is first you have to choose when first time it is installed you have to choose this peak genius board then it will ask which microcontroller you want on that particular board so we will go for selecting this peak 16F877A microcontroller so you select that and then this board is ready for virtual simulation. Let us go through what different blocks, what different hardwares are available on this particular board for the simulation. Heart of this particular board is this peak microcontroller IC. So as we have selected 16F877A microcontroller, so that microcontroller sim is simulated here. Along with this you will find this supports serial communication, so serial communication interface IC MAX232 is available here. Then you can have that serial bus connectivity. Then you have got this, there are two relays available. Two relays can be connected to two different port pins. You have DS1307. So DS1307 is serial RTC IC, real time clock IC. Along with that here you find 24C04. 24C04 is a E square prom IC with the memory capacity of 4 kilobits. So this 04 indicates 4 kilobits. Along with this you find different switches, push buttons are there. You, here you get buzzer. So to observe the performance of the PWM type of uh, programs, uh, there is one fan available here. One 16 by 2 LCD is available. There are four displays available, seven segment displays available, connected in dynamic mode. Four, four by three keypad is available. Then LEDs are connected, LEDs are available for you. This is one reset button, regulated power supply. buzzer you get here. So this is how different components are available on this particular board. All these are interface uh, to this particular microcontroller and then we can write a program through MPLAB XID and program may be written in assembly language or C. Ultimately it can give you a hex file. And what is requirement from this particular software is you have to load the hex file. For the task which you want to perform, you create the hex file 
and load that hex file. And while writing a program for interfacing of these peripherals, you have to understand the interfacing means this LCD is there. So, where exactly this LCD is connected, to which port this LCD is connected, this fan where it is connected, relays where, where they are connected. So, that interfacing diagram is available in the user manual of this particular board and there you will find all these connections, interconnections. Now, let us try to understand what steps you need to follow when you are using this particular software. So, as I said, first select the board peak genius then for that particular board select the microcontroller we will go for peak 16F877A as a microcontroller and once the microcontroller is selected it is expected that already you have the hex file for your program so you have written program maybe in assembly language or C and then you are using MPLAB you have created hex file for it so just you have to load that particular hex file. You have to give the path for the hex file. And once you load that particular hex file, that hex file will be running by this particular microcontroller. So, this one reset, just you apply reset. Power on reset is also there. You apply reset, this is a power button available. Apply reset, and then your program will get executed. Now, to understand working of these different peripherals, one sample program is available here which demonstrates the interfacing and outputs possible with these different interfacings. Now, let us try to understand these different interfacings, how they may work. So, let us go for loading that particular program. So, one example program is there. So, this is a test program. I load that test program. So, now it is first, so just if you apply reset, so this is how it works, it is expecting the key press for the push button RB1. So, if I press that RB1, so first subroutine is written for testing LCD. So, those 16 by 2 LCD is interface, we need to test all the segments are working properly or not. So, all cursor movements are occurring properly or not. So, it is written, uh, one program is written to display all the special characters, uh, all the digits, all alphabets in capital letters as well as small letters. So, whether they are getting displayed properly or not. So, this is one test program for the LCD. So, where you can test whether all the segments of your LCD are working properly, all the functions of the LCD are working properly or not. So, one buzzer is there. Now, it has started testing of the 7 segment display. So, it is testing display 1. All the characters are getting checked. All the segments are getting checked. Whether you can display all the digits, all hex values, A, B, C, D, E, F. Fine. So, uh, this is how you can make the use of this 7 segment display. Now, it is waiting for the key press RB1. So, LEDs are getting tested. So, sequentially all the LEDs are turned on. So, LED test is fine. Then, so again all the keys which are connected to the port B are getting tested. So, just press RB1, fine RB1 is ok, RB2, RB2 is ok. Like that continue RB3, RB4, RB5. Okay, so all these connections are okay. Now you can go for testing for the serial communication, whether the serial communication module is working or not. So because of timing constraint, we will skip this particular part. So for skipping, if you don't want to have that serial communication test, press RB1. Now it has started ADC program. So ADC port 1 is connected. So just you can vary the port location and its conversion this will change the analog voltage which is getting applied and then automatically its conversion will get changed so p2 connected so that also you can test so as per the port input 
so voltage which is getting displayed which is rather output of adc so now relays are getting tested so relay 1 and relay 2 both the relays are getting tested just make that port pin high you will get that relay is turned on now if it is a temperature sensor so we have got that lm35 on the board virtual lm35 so it will be displaying you the temperature so just go on changing the pot position so you will get that the temperature gets changed and as temperature crosses a particular threshold value you will find that a program is written if temperature crosses a threshold value it should turn on this particular fan so this is how the adc interfacing virtual input applied to that adc through the pot or through the temperature sensor and then it is controlling the action of the fan when the temperature crosses a particular threshold value so automatically the fan is getting turned on so now this rtc is there relay time clock so it is showing that date today's date as well as current time is getting displayed here so as, as such it is showing the system time but when it's real rtc interface to the microcontroller it will be displaying you the time value which is loaded in that particular rtc so let us try to understand how to have your peripherals means if you ha want to have some different peripherals to be connected so how to do that so for that what you have to do is you have to go to the module and click on spare parts so when you click on spare parts you have to select the spare part which you want to add let us say i want to add certain switches or i want to add a push button so just if i want to add push button click on that so these are the push buttons available but now you have to decide where those push buttons will get exactly connected. So just right click on that and go to the properties and then where you want that particular push button number one should get connected. So you have to select the port pin of the microcontroller where you want to connect that. So like this you can have connectivity of this particular peripheral to the microcontroller. So like this you can have addition of RGB LED switches, uh, LEDs you can add, LCD also can be connected. So these are the spare parts as per your requirement you can add here. And then once that spare part is added, so you have to click on the right click, uh, right click and set the properties as per your interfacing requirements, select these options and then accordingly write the program and you will get the output for that particular program. Now let us try to understand how I can have uh, your program. I have one demo program. So I load the hex file for that. So let us check what is the output, what output we get for that particular program. So PWM program is written. So with for certain duty cycle that program is written. So just load that hex file. And the instant you load that hex file, so that PWM program will. So these are the references used for this presentation. Thank you.